Hi, we are back with the Arduino Duo together with the Wiznet Ethernet Shield. And for today, I have got a HTTP server and it works that way that uh, it uh, loads the web page and also the image from the micro SD card, like so. We can also send comments. And we can see them right here. So we can process them. And also if we don't have the micro SD card, so if we remove it, we will load the default page and the image from the internal flash memory. Okay, so now let's take a look at the project. But first a few words how the communication here works. So this is our address we have to connect to. So let's type it in. And we can see a few requests from the browser. So the first one is the default web page request. So we just send here the HTML file. In this case, it's located on the micro SD card. And after we send the whole page, we have to disconnect. After we disconnect, we connect again. And this time we read the next request and this time it's the image file. So we send the image file also from the micro SD card because we found it here. And after this we also have to disconnect so the browser will know that uh, it uh, received everything and it has to display it. So a page like this. So now let's take a look at the main function here. So let's start off with the top of the file. And here we got uh, the variables that hold up the web page. This is a web page without a request for the image. And this variable holds up the web page that is displayed currently. And uh, if this is sent, the web browser will also ask for the image. And this variable holds up the image to send. Uh, those files, I mean variables, are made uh, with the LDIP. So in the case of a web page, you have to erase the first uh, row right here. So it's already deleted. And in the case of the image, uh, you have to also delete those first uh, rows. The first one here is uh, deleted, so it's this, plus one over here to delete. Because it uh, puts some headers on the image file, and uh, we don't really want to send stuff that is not related to it. So, like so. Uh, also, uh, what I got here is a compare function. It uh, differs from the build one, uh, which is uh, strcmp, mm, because we can just simply compare two strings. Uh, with a given length. So if they match, they, the output is 1. And if they don't match, it's set to 0 and it's returned. So it comes pretty handy. Next on we got the usual for the SPI transfers, uh, initialization of the SPI for the Wiznet IC. And also right here, I added a function to make an init to the chip select number one, so the micro SD card. 
next on after this this is just the usual to set up the wiznet ic just like it was in the telnet server example the configuration of the uh, slot 0 of the wiznet ic the usual sending of the messages through the ic also a, a function to send the whole page which is the located one in the flash memory so by the way if you want to put something in the flash memory you simply have to declare it as, as a static constant and it will not be put into the RAM, just in the flash memory, which the Arduino Duo has quite a lot. But the RAM is quite the issue here. Okay, and the receive function, this is the same as in the Telnet server example. The functions here also the same. And right here we got the init function for the micro SD card. It uses the slot one. And right here I have a function to check the existence of a file in the micro SD card. So if it exists and it has a size more than zero, it's returned that it exists. So the size of it. If it doesn't exist, it will return zero. And uh, if it does, we have a function to read uh, chunks of data from the file that we want to send. And right now uh, I'm sending uh, 100 of charters from the micro SD card to the WizNet IC. Mm. It can be increased, so instead of this, it can be 16 so you can send uh, really a really bigger amount of data to make it uh, a little bit speed up and right here we are at the main function so the usual setup of the board the clocks and the peripherals also the usb the chips select the micro sd card the WizNet SPI and we set up the IC with the socket 0 and the usual of checking the statuses of the socket 0 and if it is connected we print out uh, who did the call and we check the data that is coming from the web browser so we copy the data here, first 7, and check if it was a default get method or it was the get for the image here, or if it was a post method to send a command. So the first one here is sending back the image. So first of all we check if it is available on the micro SD card, if it is. It's being read from the micro SD card here. And also we have to make sure we got the, uh, the chip select one uh, active here. And after this, make sure you got the uh, chip select zero for the WizNet IC configured and send it the data from the uh, micro SD card to the WizNet IC in chunks of data to be exact at least I mean uh, the limit here is 100 uh, charters it can be less because if we are at the end of the file okay and if we don't have the micro SD card here we can send the image from the flash memory which is on the top of the file and we also send it in chunks of data up to 100 charters it can be also increased for better speed performance 
And after this, uh, we print out that uh, we are done with sending and we have to disconnect. Uh, you don't really have to make a reset, just simply to make sure it's disconnected and then reconnected. So the reconnect goes to going to the beginning of the loop here. So we read the status and we reconfigure it. And now we check up the web page. So if we have the file ix.html on the micro SD card available, we can send it from the micro SD card to the web browser through the Wiznet IC. So if we don't, we can just send the uh, HTML file from the flash memory. So after we got it sent, we have to also disconnect and reconnect. So this reset here is uh, really optional. You don't have to use it. So if you have a few more sockets in use, uh, you don't want to use it. But in this case, it's only one socket, so we can do this. Now let's take a look at the post method. So the time we send a command. Uh, for this case, add the read right here. We check if we have enough data. And if we do, we just simply copy the last 20 uh, charters from the post and uh, here we check that we got the, uh, where we got the pointer to the data so it was f name so right here I'm looking where we got m e equals and then the command so this will be the pointer to the command and we can, we can print out the command right here using a for loop. And after this, we also have to disconnect. Okay, so we can also send something manually if, you, if we like to right here, but that's pretty much it. Uh, one, more, one more thing to mention here is uh, how to add the micro SD card. So let's take a look at the ASF first. Okay, so the ASF loaded and uh, if you add the SD MMC stack, you have to make sure that after adding it from this side to this side, you have this component enabled. So this will generate two files, which are those two. And those are the accesses for applications like the FATFS. And if you go to this file, uh, those two interfaces are used for it. And if you go right here, you can see that those functions are in use because those functions are located in the generated files and also one thing to mention here if you generate it the first time uh, you will have the access memory to ram not enabled so in order in order to use it you have to declare it at the top of the file like so so you will be able to use the access to the micro SD card. Okay, next on the configuration of the board, the SPI zero, and you can uh, use the chip selects here, but this is optional because we have to declare the chip select also in the 
functions to access the micro SD card through the SPI. So let's take a look at the outline and uh, let's search for the functions that uh, select and deselect the devices. So this right here. Uh, so you have to make sure that uh, the driver knows uh, which pin to use. So I added uh, the uh, chip select method right here. So uh, I make sure that the WizNet IC is not on, so only the micro SD card is receiving uh, the data. And also in the deselect, make sure that it really is deselected for, for proper communication. So with those steps, and also one additional right here. So the SPI zero, chip select one. The micro SD card will finally work. And also one thing to mention here, I had a little bit of problems uh, reading the file of the micro SD card because I was using the global variable here in this place and it always had a error of uh, invalid object. So if I change the global variable here to a local, it uh, doesn't have any issue. So you have to use something like this and after the read a mem copy. So this solves the read problem here. And this is pretty much it. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's reset the board to get the welcome message. Let's refresh the page. So we get the page and the file. And uh, let's remove the SD card and let's check the files that we got there. So let's insert the card and let's take a look at it. It didn't get detected. Yeah, this something happens. So you have to disable and re-enable the uh, class manager. And uh, here we have the files in the micro SD card. So let's open the web page with a notepad. So this is what's being sent as the default page from the micro SD card. So right here you get the image that the browser will be looking for. And this image is located here. So we can open it and see that this is the exact one that is here. And if we refresh, refresh the page, We've got the default one with the uh, old image. So, thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful in your projects, and see you in the next one.